what we promised Jim. A promise to tell a lie doesn't count. Howdy everyone, I'm John Kennefick, AKA Old Man New Art. Welcome to my channel where I discuss building confidence, creativity, and career. And in this episode, I want to talk about building your brand personality. Now, the term brand is ubiquitous, right? Everyone refers to their brand. And the word has come to take on a life of its own. For example, high school kids act a certain way to stay true to their brand. Politicians naturally have brands, and my mail carrier, she has her brand. And at first I thought that, maybe that sounds pretentious, companies have brands, not people. But when you think about it, the term's evolution ties closely to the understanding of a brand below the surface, which is the brand's personality. But how does a brand personality become a branded business? That's a lot of alliteration, isn't it? I started my career over 30 years ago working for an ad agency. After that, in-house for global brands, and for the last 11, 12 years with my own business. And after working behind the scenes for other people, finding my own brand wasn't as easy as I first thought. So defining your brand personality is an exercise in both perception and self-awareness. As you dig deeper, you'll begin to answer the questions of who you are and how you can meet customers' needs. But how do you get there? At this initial stage of who you are, you're only thinking about how you interpret the world, your surroundings, and where you fit in. When you broaden the scope to who you are as an artist, you expand your attention to your creative sensibilities and personal style. And you have to be honest with yourself at this earlier stage, and I've made that mistake. When I started my freelance business, I tailored my brand identity more to what I thought my client wanted uh, than who I actually was. And it didn't feel authentic, which had me readjusting. So take the time to create a brand based on who you truly are. And knowing this will create, a, it will create the driving force that keeps you grounded until the momentum of your brand kicks in. So now let's tie that to your client. How can who you are and what you do bring value to a potential client? First, you have to know who your client is. When you determine your skills can both satisfy your creative need and the need of a client, in a very general sense at first, you can now move forward and determine exactly who that client is. This is where we match your talents to the right demographic. And this will eventually take shape as a buyer persona or a client avatar. This avatar effectively distills a whole market segment into one easy to understand person who can't live without your brand. So that's the business 101 approach, but remember that if you're not offering a commodity like running shoes or burritos, not only will your client avatar naturally look different, but the way you gather information will vary as well. Since so much of your business is based on who you are personally, you have to look a bit beyond the somewhat anonymous, detached, online, or over-the-counter transaction that other types of business rely on and figure in that you also have to interact with the customer. So your preferences, once again, play a role in determining your client. Now let's move to your competition and focus on the others looking to occupy your space. Who's your competition? We start with a time-tested SWOT analysis where we take into account your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Then by comparing other brands' websites, pricing, offerings, and personalities, you get a good idea of where you sit among the competition, but also you can identify areas that others may not be serving. Just keep in mind that you want to logically fit in the same market as the competition, but stand out, which is a delicate balance to say the least. Beyond selling, your brand needs a purpose. So what is your brand's purpose? This question is something that we began to answer in step one when you considered how your talents could become a branded business. And 
Here, those thoughts will shape your mission statement. The mission statement is a chance to formalize your brand's goals and values. This is for you and will theoretically serve as the basis for every decision you make. For Tesla, it's to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy through increasingly affordable electric vehicles in addition to renewable energy generation and storage. Now, similar but different from your mission statement is your unique selling proposition or your USP, which sums up your promise to your customer. And one of the most well-known is Domino Pizza's fresh hot pizza delivered in 30 minutes or less guaranteed. Now, as you can see, your mission statement is the promise you make to your company, while the unique selling proposition is the promise to your customer. With those elements in place, what is your brand's personality? Your brand's personality is one of the most important aspects of your brand. This is where you show who you are, differentiate yourself, and tell the world what sets you apart. This is your voice, both internally and to your customers. A constant voice that plays front and center in your website, media posts, and customer interactions. This voice should be true to your brand, but also speak to your target market in their own language. It's important to note that your tone of voice will be uniquely you, but the five dimensions of brand personality, which are excitement, sincerity, ruggedness, competence, and, <laughs> and sophistication should be figured into your voice as well. When filtering these points through your messaging, you'll be hitting on the things that clients look for from brands. And your brand's personality will also play into your brand story. Built on all the previous steps to let your audience know why you and your brand are doing what you do. To write an effective brand story, you have to make sure that you tell the part of your story that everyone in your target audience can identify with. Sorry, I, I just want to cut in for just one second, just one second. A great brand personality can't be overstated. This is where we can form our strongest connections with our clients. On the most basic level, is just showing up and giving exactly what's needed enough? Of course not. Think of that thoughtful friend who goes that extra mile and checks in for no reason and listens to you, not wanting anything, as opposed to the guy who shows up and kind of fixes your sink and then five minutes after he's gone, sends a text to leave him a five-star review. On the other hand, think of that partner who surprises you with your favorite ice cream for no reason as opposed to the customer service rep who's upselling your TV package as you're trying to cancel your subscription. I think you can see what I'm getting at. I'm really very upset with my plumber and cable company, but also concentrating on your company's objectives over the customer's needs creates a self-obsessed company personality, and that's just a bad brand. When we focus on our clients, it moves us one step closer to understanding a good brand. Okay, I'm done. Go ahead. I forgot where I was. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay. What's your brand's name? Naming your brand can vary in difficulty from the okay, got it, of Toys R Us to the less evident Amazon.com. There are many ways to go about this. Now, in the past, I've made the mistake of getting into that too creative to connect area when considering a name. But unless you're taking your own name, just make sure that your name is self-explanatory or at the very least evokes the intended feeling. So now, logo. Many folks get upset when someone confuses brand with logo, but I understand the confusion. It's one of the first impressions that people will have of your brand. and for that reason, it's extremely important. The work that goes into developing a successful brand personality through voice and story will serve as a clear roadmap for you or a higher team to create your logo, the visual elements of your brand. The chosen colors, fonts, and iconography will reflect your brand through cohesive design. Also, it's always important to put your intended logo through the paces and make sure that what looks good large reads well in all the small places that you plan to be. Is that everything? Now that you've gone through the steps and you're happy with everything you've created, you're set, right? Well, yes and no. You've created all the elements of who and what your brand is, and now you have to implement brand strategy and positioning, always focusing on the user experience to let your audience know your brand 
on a large scale and then down to every internal email, social media post, and client interaction. So your brand runs through every bit of your business. So wait, did, did you just create a brand? Well, I would say that your company is now branded, but branding is in the hands of the customer. And this isn't semantics. And it even goes a little further than the value customers attach to your company. It's helpful to understand that clients who choose certain brands do so for as many intangible reasons as they do for the promises that brands make. Waiting for your favorite artist to drop new music, when the new iPhones are released in the fall, or when your favorite team season starts, good brands give us a sense of comfort, desire, anticipation, satisfaction, and, and, and validation. That's your brand. And the same client who bought their new car to feel connected to a certain lifestyle chose your brand for the same reason, how you make them feel. There really is no difference. And that's all I got. That's all for today. I hope you were able to sharpen your branding perspective in some little way. So let me know what you think in the comments. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And remember, the beauty of art is that it's never too late to start, unless of course you're painting a sunset. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.